this is Born's Ace 128 Absolute Encoder. It differs from a rotary encoder, which generates a quadrature signature and tells you how far it has turned and in which direction. An absolute encoder tells you where it is. The resolution on this device is 128 positions in the circle. Uh, there are much more high resolution and much more expensive encoders on the market, but this is the cheapest one you can get, and uh, it's useful for uh, Arduino Hobby Electronics and other such projects. It's an electromechanical device, uh, which has 10 pins on the back, and the 10 pins are 8 for data and 2 ground pins. And the internal contacts connect those together and generate uh, 256 different possible outputs, uh, which are translated into 128 different uh, values via a lookup table. Uh, there's a lot of coding involved in sorting the lookup table, and there's a lot of pins if you do this uh, to your Arduino. Uh, I've developed a library to handle all the software issues, so you can just wire one of these up and uh, use it in your Arduino projects. The uh, problem with the number of pins is solved by using these modules. So we have uh, Christmassy ones, blue ones, and the difference between these is the connector. So these are configured to go on your I2C bus, which I will not go into the, or I squared C it's sometimes called, uh, which I will not go into here. It allows you to connect multiple devices to your Arduino using just two pins. Um, the different varieties here uh, provide you with uh, the 0.1 inch uh, pinout for standard uh, pins. And then you've also got a Grove connector here, the seed, seed Grove standard. And here you have positions to put your I2C pull up resistors. Uh, every I2C bus requires uh, pull-up resistors on each of the two lines, and this gives you a location to put them. You can put them elsewhere in the bus if you so desire. Uh, we can also change the I2C address on the device using these uh, solder jumpers, and the devices also come with a base address of either hex 20 or hex 38. So that gives you a complete uh, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, times two is 16 different addresses you can have. So you can have 16 of these in your project. For the MKR Arduinos, uh, which do not use the uh, regular Atmel chips, uh, they do not have an EEPROM, and the software uses three bytes of EEPROM to remember the zero position and how far you've turned it if you're using it in multi-turn mode. Uh, so there is an optional uh, EE prom chip on here that the uh, can be the, the software supports if you're using one of those Arduinos. You don't need that option if you have a regular Arduino like an Uno, um, and you only need one of these per project because there's 2,000 bytes of storage in there that you can use for other stuff. You only need three bytes for uh, each of these modules. Uh, so how do they actually work? So the variety, the other variety we have is I also sell the uh, backpacks separately. These are available on my Tindy store and my Etsy store. Um, so they are uh, available with backpack only if you've already purchased some of these from another location. Uh, so let's look at one in action. We'll move the knob over to the red one. And we'll bring over, we have an Arduino off to the side here with the software loaded. And the software I have here is my uh, testing software that I use when I make the modules. And we'll plug in our module, which goes up that way. And we'll reset the Arduino. And the first thing it comes up is it's asking for, so this is doing a circuit test, in fact, for all the pins to make sure that they're all the contacts are changing. And then we get into our position here. So we'll set this to zero. So we have position zero. So you'll notice on my knob, 
uh, I want zero to be at the top, right? So zero is not at the top. So what we do is we can move this to the top where we want our zero to be. And then there's a signal we can send to the software, uh, which resets. Uh, yeah, there's a button. Uh, that resets the logical zero that we use for our output. So that's putting an offset in the software. So now my zero is at the top. And if I uh, restart the Arduino and reset it, it still knows that the zero is at the top, at position 39. So the numbers on the screen here, the 96 is the actual binary value that comes out of the physical device. 39 is what comes out of the lookup table. And then these three values here are the translation we have for the different ways you can read that value in your program. On the left here, we have minus 64 to plus 63. So that's a signed 7-bit integer. Uh, here we have 0 to 127, which is an unsigned 7-bit integer. And here we have a 16-bit uh, signed integer, which is uh, centered on 0. And it will remember uh, when you roll past a full turn. See, these are all together until we get up to the bottom, 63. And that goes to 60, minus 64 and 64. And then when we come a full circle, we are at 127. And then those go back to 0. And But the multi-turn is up to 128. And this works in the other direction as well. We come around. We have... Uh, zero and these go negative take another full turn the same thing happens we keep going negative on the multi-turn so you can use these in place of a potentiometer if you want to have a digital value you want to be able to do multiple turns and know how far you've gone uh, usually you can use a potentiometer uh, with an analog pin or you can use a a uh, regular rotary encoder if you just want something you can turn and turn. Uh, this has a more specialized application. I find it's useful for controlling uh, specific things. The original application is my Dalek head. So I'd have one of these mounted to my head. One of them is mounted to the motor that controls the Dalek head. So when I turn my head, the Dalek head moves the same angle. So the head follows my head. And I have another one connected to a tilt sensor that controls the eye and moves the eye up and down. And these are connected to uh, wiper motors, of all things. So you can use them for controlling servos and get absolute positions that match to your uh, match to where you have it on your panel. These are available in my Tindy store and my Etsy store. I try and keep all the 16 different varieties in stock, and I ship worldwide wherever USPS ship. I will ship either regular first-class mail or priority mail if you prefer. This is uh, Alistair signing off for the Red Hunter store.